Hey everyone, this is Colin and today I have the chance to review the Mockwheel Tour Plus e-bike. In this video, I'm going to unbox it, I'm going to assemble it, I'm going to go over the different parts of the bike and the different functions, and then I'll test ride it, and then I'll give you my review and conclusion of the bike. The Mockwheel Tour Plus is a 750 watt rear hub e-bike with a 48 volt 16 amp hour battery with five levels of pedal assist and a half twist throttle. It weighs 80 pounds, has a range of up to 45 miles, and I personally clocked a max speed of 32 miles per hour. There are adjustable handlebars and suspension forks, massive 26 by 4.0 tires and cushion seats for a comfortable ride. It's advertised for riders 5 foot 3 to 6 foot 4. The drivetrain has a single chainring in the front with a 7 speed Shimano derailleur in the back, so you can easily climb steep hills. The front and rear 180 millimeter disc brakes are powerful enough to stop on a dime. The integrated LED headlight and lever activated brake lights are excellent safety features and the PVC leather grips, full fenders and rear rack are nice add-ons on this beautiful bike. The bike seems to be packaged well. There's a lot of foam padding, especially on the fork, on the frame, around the frame back here, and then up here as well. Okay, right now we have the bike out of the box, and as you can see, there's a lot of good protection around the bike. Nothing seems to be dented from what I can tell. There was an accessory box. I'll open that in a second. There was also another box here pretty heavy. I'm guessing this is the battery and the charger, but we'll see in a second. So right now I'm just going to take all the zip ties off. I'm going to take, well, I'll just put this on the ground. This is the front fender. I'm going to take the zip ties off the bike, trying not to damage the wheel or the tire. Let's see what's inside the accessory box. So there's an extra set of brake pads, there's zip ties, there's some um, bolts. I'm not sure where they go quite yet. There is also Allen keys of various lengths. There is a bike pump. There's these, I'm not sure what these are, but they're like plastic brackets with screws. I guess maybe you can hold the cables in place. There's two sets of pedals. Wrench, 15 millimeter. Here is reflectors, it's two of these. There's another wrench, it's a 19 millimeter. There's a set of instructions, user manual. And there's also a box. And this is the battery charger. Over here, let's see what's inside. I'm guessing this is a battery. It says 48 volt, 16 amp hours. Yep. This is the battery. Looks like there's a battery indicator. You press that here. Um, there's an adapter for power. I guess this is to release the battery. 
I'm gonna quickly go over this manual. Here's the inside. There's attention, safety precautions, product dimensions, assembly instructions, LCD, odometer instructions, battery and charger, brake shock absorption, e-bike care, safety checklist, troubleshooting, warranty, and disclaimer. So you can pause this at any moment and review this yourself. Here's the controls. Maximum load is 400 pounds, including cargo. Looks like there's a handle, a brake, shifter, the throttle, LCD odometer, LCD controls, on and off switch, lights. Um, yeah, that's just the standard stuff. So assembly, removing it from the package, handlebar assembly. Headlight fender assembly. So you can pause this at any time and assemble it yourself. Front wheel installation, seat mounting and handlebar adjustment, pedal ins installation, battery installation and removal. Um, and then the instructions for the LCD odometer. See battery power, air diagnostic, uh, e-bike gears, multi-functions, we'll go over that in a second. Uh, control guide, battery charging, and then care, brake and shocks, safety checklist, troubleshooting, and warranty. Disclaimer. Right now I'm going to quickly assemble the bike. I'm going to follow the instructions that I previously showed, so if you want to go into detail of how to install it, you can look at the instruction manual or rewind a few minutes and go over that. So for the interest of time, I have a lot of these screws already open and I originally started assembling it the first time, but I realized that this is actually backwards. I guess I didn't read the instruction manual that closely. So the first thing to do is actually to flip this around and then I already pre-loosened this so I can flip this over here. So right now I'm just going to uh, snugly have this in place. I'll re-tighten everything later, but for the interest of time, I'm just going to start installing everything and then I'm going to fast forward like maybe uh, two or five times the speed. So without further ado, you can just watch. The nice thing on this pedal arm is that it says the direction that you should be turning the wrench. So the threads are actually different on the left and right. So for the right, you would turn it right to tighten it. And then on the left, you would turn it left to tighten it. Some people suggest putting a thread locker just so that the pedal doesn't come off. But for me, I don't really mind not putting it in. I can kind of feel if the pedal is getting loose and then I can always adjust it at home. But if you're concerned, you can always put thread locker. And then for the rear, you can't see this, but to tighten it, you would turn it left or counterclockwise. The seat, I'll adjust later once I get the bike off the ground. And same with the handlebar. I'll tighten it when the bike is on the ground. Same with the stem, but for now, we can put the battery in. So right here, there's just this giant gap for the battery. And I guess that's where, when you slide this in, you'll, able, you'll be able to charge the battery. Let me just pop this in. I don't know if there's any set orientation. Yeah, I just slid that in and it went in. It actually does come with a set of keys, which is in the front and on this side, which I'll show you in a second, there is a lock. So right now I cannot take the battery out without putting the key in. Right now I'm going to charge the bike and I'm just gonna 
put the adapter in that plug right there. Here is the power brick and it is red right now. That means it's charging. I'll just leave this charging for a few hours or overnight and come back when it's green. It says that a single battery charge will take five to six hours and then you'll get a range of 30 miles and it's based on the usage due to varying factors such as elevation, speed, payload, acceleration, number of starts and stops, tire pressure, terrain, and other, or as well as air temperature. So it says to recharge the battery on the e-bike only, or you can remove the battery and then charge it separately. And then there's different charging tips, which you can read on your own time. Right now, I'm going to inflate the tires to 20 PSI. Currently it's at 4.5 PSI. I do the same thing for the rear. The last thing I'm going to do is check all the bolts and nuts to make sure that they're tightened. Anything that can move, I'm going to tighten it. I'm also going to adjust the shifter. Let's go through the different parts of the bike, starting from the top handlebar. So over here we have some sort of, it looks like leather or some similar material. And then there's stitching here, which shows that they want you to feel the high quality starting with the handlebars. Here is the throttle to control the speed of the bike. I believe it is pressure sensitive, so if you hold it here, you would probably get like five to 10%, and then if you open all the way, you get full throttle. We have a shifter, so you can shift up and down, seven speeds, Shimano, and then we have the front brake over here. Here we have the LCD screen, which we'll go through the functions in a bit. On the other side, we have the controls for the pedal assist, so you can go up or down. I think it has pedal assist zero through five. There's a power button. You can't see it right now, but it's there. There is a button for the light. There's a button for a horn, which is cool. And then here is the other grip, and you can see the stitching. There's also a front brake lever. Right here, we have an adjustable headset, so you would use your Allen key to loosen this and you can tilt the stem up or down. Coming down the handlebar, we have good cable management. They also have this cloth Velcro kind of cable wrap, which just screams good quality because most places just use that plastic coil. Here's another view of the cable management from the front. This is the keys, which locks the battery on the left side. Going to the fork, there appears to be adjustments for both the left and right fork. You turn it, clockwise to tighten and counterclockwise to loosen. I believe the suspension is springs based on what I felt, but I can update you if they are hydraulic or oil based. Here is our front headlight, which I will turn on in a second. We have our front fender. There is an area right here that has four attachments. I believe this is for a front basket. Down here, the forks appear to be a shine brand. The Tires are 26 by 4.0 and they're Chow Yang brand. And these rims are massive. Just look at how thick this is. This is probably like maybe four inches wide. For the front brakes, we have this cable pull disc brake and it appears to be a Zoom brand. And then I believe these front rotors are 180 millimeters. We were given two sets of keys. Just put the key in, turn it, and then this pops out which is pretty cool. And then to put the battery back in, I just snapped it back in. So right now, I can take the battery out and then put it back in. Moving towards the back, we have a pretty wide seat. There's a good amount of cushion to it. There's a seat height adjustment. You just pull this out and then pull the seat up or down. Right here, we have the opening to charge the battery. It's made out of rubber, seems to have a good seal. I don't know if it's waterproof, but it seems to be water resistant or at least weather resistant. And when Mach Wheel reached out to me asking which bike I wanted to review, I chose the Tour Plus because I really liked how the frame looked. It just looks very sleek and then the battery just fits in with the frame. I think the other model that they had, they had a skinnier tube, but the battery was sticking out. So I really liked how this looked and I liked the green one just because the color looks pretty cool and it had this decal sticker right here. Down here we have a single chain ring crank set and it looks like this might be interchangeable. 
So you would just take these bolts out and find one that is similar to the size if you wanted to increase or decrease the number of teeth. Back here we have quite a bit going on. So this is that similar sleeve, the Velcro cloth sleeve that was used to manage the cables in the front. It's kind of a nice touch, I think. Back here we have a Shimano Turney rear derailleur and a seven speed cassette. There's a silver chain that looks pretty cool. It almost looks powder coated. Back here is the rear rack, looks pretty cool, very wide. We have the rear tail light. And if I turn the bike on, if I press the brake, the light engages. And if I turn the lamp on, it has like a running light. And then if I press the brake, it also flashes. It's pretty cool. So let me turn off the light and I can still use it regularly. We have the rear fender. We also have the same tire that was in the front. This was the Chow Yang 26 by 4.0. And you can kind of see how thick the tire tread is. Looking at the other side, we have the mock wheel 48 volt, 750 watt, 26 inch rear hub. That's right there. And then we have the rear brake. Um, it's the linear cable one, similar to the front. And then I believe this is also a 180 millimeter rear rotor. We also have a kickstand. Let's go through the different controls. So to turn the bike on, you press and hold the M button right here where my thumb is and the bike turns on. To turn it off, you would do the same thing, press and hold. So let's turn the bike on. Starting from the top left, we have the button for the headlight. So I can turn that on and off. We have a horn button. We have the pedal assist. So by default, it went to pedal assist one. So if I didn't want any pedal assist, which means when I'm pedaling, it won't provide any power. I could change it with these direction arrows. So zero, if I pedaled, nothing, there wouldn't be any pedal assist. I can go to one and then two, three, four, five, meaning five would be the most. So let's just go through the different ones. I'm gonna go through the different pedal assists with the twist throttle. So pedal assist zero, obviously I'm not gonna have any power. And then if I go to one, the max speed is 9.9 miles per hour. Pedal assist two, I'm getting 14.9. Three, I'm getting 19.8. Four, I'm getting 24.9. And five, I'm getting 31.1. So this is just theoretical. I think if I was on the road doing this, it would be slower. So I think the max was supposed to be like 28 miles per hour, but we'll see. This is pedal assist zero. I'm rotating the, the throttle and there's no power. This is pedal assist one. Pedal assist two. Pedal assist three. Pedal assist four. Pedal assist five. Let's just look at this right here. We have the energy bar. That's how full the battery is. We have the speed. We can also change it I think if you press and hold the M and up button, it has the max speed and average speed. And then we can go back to the regular speed. Down here we had the pedal assist, zero, one, two, three, four, five. And then I think if you press and hold the bottom button for five seconds, you're in a walk mode. It's supposed to go six kilometers per hour press and hold that again. We're back to the regular mode. And then down here, we have the odometer. If you press the M button, it goes to trip A, which measures whatever trip you want to record. Here's the voltage of the battery. Here's the current. So right now it's showing zero, but if I throttle, you can see that it changes. And then we also have the time that we've been riding. 
The instructions also show a parameter mode. So if you press and hold the up and down arrows, it goes to a different parameter. It's um, parameter one, and you can adjust that by going up and down. So parameter one is supposed to be the screen brightness. And then for parameter two, I just press the M button or the power button, and I went to parameter two. This is supposed to be the mileage units. So one is miles per hour, and then zero is kilometers per hour. There's other parameters. I'm not sure what zero through, I believe, 17 are, but they said for 16, if you press and hold the up button, it clears the odometer. So it went back to zero. And then, well, I guess there's 20 parameters. I should ask them what they are. So I think if you just wait, um, it will save the parameters and go back to the, the regular screen. Right now, I'm going to run through the different pedal assists. So this is pedal assist zero. If I pedal, there is no pedal assist. This is pedal assist one. You can hear a difference. And then this is pedal assist two. I haven't adjusted the rear rotor, so that's why it's rubbing a little. This is pedal assist three. Pedal assist four. Pedal assist five. I'm here at a parking lot and I'm going to test the Mach Wheel Tour Plus. Let's turn this on. So I'm just going to go to pedal assist zero and just test out the different pedal assists with pedaling only. So right now I'm just pedaling. I do feel a bit of resistance. It's actually a notice, noticeable about amount of resistance on my thighs as I'm pedaling and I'm going about seven miles per hour, definitely feel the resistance. So let's go to pedal assist one right away. It's so much easier to pedal. So I'm just gonna bike around this parking lot. I'm gonna start this exercise again. I'm gonna go to pedal assist one and then see what speed I get by the end of the block. So we're pedaling, feel the power kicking in. And like 10 miles per hour. It's actually getting a little difficult climbing up this semi-small hill. And again, I'm on the lowest cassette on the back, which makes it harder, but I can get the maximum speed. I can always shift up higher, but for this purpose, a lot of people want to know what the max speed is. so. Going back down, let's see what speed we get at the end of the block. Because there's a downhill, it helps. So we're at like 18 miles per hour. I think that's good. I'm just gonna stop and turn around. So I'm going to, without getting off, go to the next pedal assist, coming to a complete stop, or it is for me. Uh, pedal assist two. Definitely a few more power. Going up this hill again, taking a lot easier. We're at 15 miles per hour and it takes this hill with some effort, but not a lot. When we got to 14 miles per hour, let's make a U-turn feel that power kicking in when I pedal. 
going down. We're hitting 16 miles per hour for the same amount of effort. I can pedal a little harder, but I think we're around 18. Okay, slowing down. Going to pedal assist three. Trying to come to a complete stop without putting my feet on the ground. Okay, starting from the stop. Uh, that initial kick of the motor. Definitely feel more power there. We're already at 17 miles, 18. We're at 18. Took that hill easily. Let's see what we get going downhill for that same amount of effort. We hit 20.6. Okay. Slow down. Go to pedal assist four. Slow down to a stop. And the first pedal, feel the power kicking in. Just pedaling the same amount of effort. We're already at 20. And it took this hill very easily. Going back down. We're at 22, 23 miles, 24 miles per hour, close to 25 before we ran out of space. Going to pedal assist five. Okay, coming to a stop. Let me turn the headlight on. It's not, it's kind of bright. I have to aim it later. All right, pedal says five. We're already at 18, 19 miles per hour. By the end of the hill, we're at 22. Let's go down the hill, see how fast we can go before the end of the block. A little short of 28. Okay. So let's try the same thing but with the throttle. Come to a stop using the throttle only. We're at 9.9, 10 miles per hour. And we're chugging along. It's taking some effort. There's a noticeable amount of effort for that hill. Let's go around. We got U turn. Feel that power kick in. And we're capping off at 11, 12 miles per hour. We're at 13. <sighs> 13. So let's turn around. Going to pedal assist two. I'm a relatively complete stop. Full throttle, we're at 14, 15. We hit 15. Now we're chugging along up this hill, a little shy of 15. Let's make a U-turn. Going down the same hill, we hit 15.6, 15 15.7, 9, 16, 16.1. Okay, let's turn around, go to pedal assist three, come to a relatively complete stop. 
and then throttling. Hitting 18, 19 miles per hour. 19.8. Wait for this car to pass behind me. Going back down this hill. Just using throttle, we're hitting 20, 20 miles per hour. Slowing down, making a U-turn, going to pedal assist four. Coming to a relatively complete stop. Twenty one point five miles per hour. I think we hit a little higher after that. Like twenty one point eight making a U turn. Let's go down. Let's see if we can beat this Tesla. Twenty three, twenty four, twenty five. All right. a U-turn. Pedal says five. We're hitting 21.8, 21.22. Let's make that U-turn. we could have hit more or higher speed if we had more space. So I'm just going to ride around and give you my review. So again, this is the Mach Wheel Tour Plus. I'm just going to go on pedal assist 5 and keep on it. So definitely the pedal assist because you're actually pedaling, you're getting more, more uh, speed than just using the throttle come to a complete stop. The brakes are very good. So I'm gonna do a mix of throttle and pedaling. Uh, I mean, for me, I like keeping it on the fastest pedal assist, pedal assist five. I'm just gonna ride around, ride around the streets, then go back to the parking lot and go through the parking structure. Yeah, so again, this is the Mach Wheel Tour Plus. It's a 750 watt rear hub motor with 100 and no, 48 volt battery. I think it's 16.2 amps. Uh, I'll correct it if I'm wrong. But so far, I really like it uh, compared to the other bikes that I've gotten. So my wife has the Hyper E-Ride City from Walmart that was $398 uh, on sale like two years ago but now it's like sometimes it jumps up to jumps up to like $800 and then I have the Jetson Bolt which is the folding portable bike and that one although it's portable it's not very fast I think the max speed was like 15 miles per hour go over here. I mean, I'm really liking this. I think uh, on the stand, it was hitting 32 miles per hour, which is very good, or very fast. I think some of these bikes are limited to 28 miles. I like that it has these shocks and these super fat wheels. 26 inch by four wheels. So I'm just riding around the city and I mean, it's doing it all. Got to stop. 
see. And it hits 22, 23 miles per hour pretty quickly in like, I don't know, what was that, three seconds? It's very fast. The brakes are excellent. I trust them. They're 180 millimeter disc brakes on the front and rear. And I think out of the box they they rub a little bit, but I haven't gotten a chance to uh, like really wear them in and adjust them. But I think that's just part of like setting any bike up. Uh, I haven't adjusted the shocks, but it seems to be taking all these potholes well. Pedal assist is very good. Starting with the packaging, I thought it was packaged really well. There's a lot of foam protecting the parts. The parts feel very high quality. They use a PVC leather on the handlebars, which is the thing or the part that you could feel automatically, which shows high quality. This bike is on sale right now for $16.99. And then I think normally it is $17.99, so you're getting $100 off. And if you buy two, you get $300 off. And it's a discount. I'll share the link in the description section below so you can check that out. Gotta adjust my headlights so I can see better. So this is good. Oh, she's pretty far. I'm just gonna continue biking around. Sharing my thoughts. Oh, this is a steep hill. Let's see how it handles this this hill right here. So again, I'm on the lowest cassette in the rear. It's taking it well. It's starting to struggle a little bit. So let me go to the second, third, fourth. This is a pretty steep hill. So. I'm on the highest one, the seventh biggest uh, cassette on the rear. And yeah, I think this is a good indicator of the bike that it can take like pretty much any steep hill. And I just, I just proved it. So there you go. This bike handles hills very well. I'm on pedal assist five again. I think uh, any lower pedal assist would have been more difficult. Came with a lot of parts, came with all the tools that you need to assemble this bike together. The Allen keys, I had a pump, it had wrenches, there was a charger, the battery, and all the other parts that need to get this bike put together. Uh, so the assembly was pretty easy. Um, you can follow the, instruction, the directions in the instructions to get it put together. And then you charge it for, I think like, I think it was like five to six hours and you get that full charge. It's very torquey. Definitely notice a lot of power on pedal assist five. And especially if you're doing those U-turns on the streets, sometimes that power just kicks in and like pulls you. So you gotta be careful with that. So I'm going down that pretty steep hill again. Let's see how fast I can go down it. stop sign coming up. So, yep. All right, I think it might be too cold because I wasn't able to hit the, the stop sign. I wasn't able to come to a complete stop. And these are brand new brake pads, so brand new brake pads and, all right, there we go. Uh, again, these are brand new brake, brake pads and brake rotors. I haven't embedded the brake pads to like fully grip yet so that's why i wasn't able to hit that stop sign but the next one um there's breaking downhill i actually did lock up the rear wheel and it started skidding a little bit so i just need to break these in let's go down this hill Hitting 28 miles per hour. I'm not even pedaling, I'm just riding down the hill. Yeah, this bike is very nice. I really like it. 
Time to complete that. All right. See if we can keep up with the cars. of the cars around me so I'm just gonna pull over to the sidewalk I mentioned earlier that there was a horn which is pretty cool I was able to hit like 29 miles per hour on the main road which is not quite matching the speed of traffic but I guess if I'm off to the side it's not bad. Overall, I really like this bike. It's very fun to ride around. I was able to go through, go around the city. I was able to go in parking lots and in garages. And I was able to like just take all these bumps without any issues. I think the build quality is excellent. Like it has uh, PVC leather grips and has a lot of power. I was able to hit like 30 miles per hour on the stand, hit 32 miles per hour, which is very good. It's very torquey as well. So if this is a bike that, um, I think it's very good for like off-roading or if you're ever just like riding on the actual street, like around the city, this, this bike is very good. I think if the tires were any thinner, there is a version I think that has thinner tires with the same battery, you'd probably hit the high speeds a lot quicker. But I think the speeds that this bike is capable of doing, you really want a very fat tire just for added safety. So for the, the max speed, that's what a lot of people care about. I'll list them um, here on the screen for the pedal assist only and then the throttle only for the varying power assist levels. So you can just pause and take a look at that. Another thing that people care about is the bike range. And I think the manual said that there was a 30 mile range and I looked on their website, it said 45 plus mile range. So I'm not sure which one it is. I already put 10 miles and it's still like at full battery. So I'll share with you what my range was for the first battery full charge that I had. If you look on the Tour Plus website, there is a lot of accessories that they have. They have like a front basket. The bike already comes with a rear rack, which is very nice. I saw that they had a baby seat that you can put to the back or attach to the back and carry a baby or toddler, which is pretty cool as well. I think that comes out in May. It has the Velcro, like cloth Velcro around the cables instead of like just uh, plastic coils, which is a nice touch. I think the, the paint job is very good. And I like the decals that they put in as well. Just the build quality of it seems very good. They have like the fenders, they have a nice touch. They have the front headlamp and the rear um, brake light. It's a nice touch as well. I think overall the build quality seems very good. Um, it doesn't feel cheap at all. The bike is 80 pounds again, so it's not something that you'd probably want to carry around in your car. It seems uh, very heavy to lug around if you're ever transporting it. But if you're just like coming out of your house and just biking, you know, this bike is very fun. Um, the bike does have a lock for the battery. Like once you click the battery in, you're not able to take it out until you use the key. 
Brakes are good. Front crank is good. Rear crank, the shifters uh, need a minor shifting, adjusting. But that's with any bike. So I don't, I don't really have any complaints with this bike. I really like it. And it's uh, $1,700 right now. It's $100 off. So if you're um, very interested in this bike, I'd suggest that you check it out. If you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Please let me know what brought you to this video. And again, if you found the video useful or helpful, please feel free to like this video. And if you'd like to see more videos like these, please feel free to subscribe. Doing any of these actions helps support my channel so I can continue creating videos like this. So hopefully if you found this video useful. Again, if you have any questions, comments, leave them in the comment section below. So thank you for watching and take care. God bless.